Interrupted Outdoors, your home for hearing the greatest outdoor stories, learning about the latest gear and tactics that will prepare you to experience the best of life in the outdoors. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Steve Hallman with Interrupted Outdoors and I got my buddy Doug Griner here today and we're going to go over some basic gear and the idea behind this is to work in conjunction with episode 20 of the Interrupted Podcast. Doug and his buddy Brian Butler were just on the show and man, we had an incredible conversation talking about their awesome trip yeah, out west fun. and uh, out to Colorado where they were able to put a tag on a giant bull and it was just awesome. But in the show, they really highlighted some different gear and how it made the trip and some things you learned from the first year. Yes, absolutely. And um, so what we want to do now is just take some time and be able to show you guys what exactly Doug and Brian were thinking and but actually let you see some of this gear that they were talking about. So yeah, Doug, just go through your, your, your pack and what, what really made the trip and what are the musts that you uh, pulled away from this? Yeah, Steve, so um, basically what I had in mind when he asked me to do this was just to go through some of the basics. You can get into gadgets galore um, and, and bells and whistles, but this is just your basic stuff that you're going to need to get started on a mountain hunt. We're going to go over the pack. Um, we're going to go over sleep system. I'm going to go over shoes. I'm going to go over my cook system, and I'm going to go over my water. Right on. And I'm going to tie it in with our safety piece as far as like a communication piece that we use to stay in touch with the world or emergency personnel if things were to go bad. Yeah. So the first thing I'll start with is the pack. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just put this out there. We are not associated with any brand out there. And the main thing is that you guys get the quality gear, and this is the stuff that Doug and Brian have found that are going to work the best for them so far. And yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, so far. Yeah, and some, of, <laughs> some of this has changed, and some of it's evolved. Off, but um, we pay full price for all of this. <laughs> yeah, I wish we had an affiliation with some of these companies because that would be great. Absolutely. Um, but I'm going to start off with kind of how I carry the gear. Yep. And the first thing is my pack. So I have actually upgraded. Last year I had a Kuyu pack and there was absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think we mentioned in the podcast that that's a really good startup pack. Yeah. And I think some guys would even say that that's the pack that they would have by choice. But mm -hmm. the one thing with pack is with a pack is it's a lot like shoes and you have to find the pack that fits well on your body type. And for me, um, I went ahead with an Exo pack. So this is an Exo Mountain Gear. It's a 4800, so it's 4800 cubic inches. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a K3 frame. So they've had different generations of frames and K3 was the one they came out with about a year and a half ago. But they still make a K2 frame that you can pick up aftermarket okay. for a lot cheaper. Um, I'd say the price point on that, if you were to get it offline, would be somewhere around four And their, their belt systems are modular. You get, are, you yep. get a belt system that is yeah, yeah. for your, your body. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing we'll go into will be the sleep system. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's probably our uh, next biggest gear-heavy piece. Um, and I'll start from the ground up, and then we'll, we'll end with the tent. So the uh, very important part is your sleeping pad. If you are uh, going into summertime, you can probably get away with any sleeping pad that keeps you sleeping pad that keeps you off of the ground. But if you know you're going to have cold weather, weather, the sleeping pad is going to insulate you from the cold ground. So you're going to want one that has a relatively high rating. I think now most companies use a either um, zero or one through four or five rating to okay. kind of give you. And a five would be your heaviest. You're going to accrue a little bit of weight there because it's gonna be a beefier sleeping pad that's gonna keep you up higher off of the ground and insulated. Um, but in this case, I think this is a three, a three season pad and it's a big Agnes pad. It is a little bit longer and a little bit wider. That way I can move around a little bit. I'll sacrifice a little bit of weight to get good sleep. Um, I could have gone smaller and, and, and shaved a few ounces, but to me, I want ample room to be able to move around. Be comfortable. Yeah, I'm a stomach sleeper. Sometimes I'm a side sleeper, so I want that room. So to me, that's worth the weight penalty. Um, this is an Ultra Air Core. I don't think they make this one anymore. Um, make sure you're looking for an insulated model. Again, that's just going to be in your rating. You want to make sure that you're going to have plenty of space off of the ground and you're not going to lose body heat to the ground because that's the easiest way to get cold sleeping in a tent is if you are in contact with the ground yeah. on an uninsulated pad. Mm -hmm. Well, and remember guys that this is, uh, these are longer duration trips that Doug and Brian were sure. talking yeah, about we, too. We were this isn't about like getting nine or 10 days. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Nine so nine that's really days. gonna impact some of how you go about the gear too. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. If, 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 and if you're gonna be truck camping or if you know that you're gonna be in close proximity to um, kind of a fail safe if it were to get extremely cold and you weren't prepared then you might be able to get away with something else but right. in this case we were nowhere near a truck 
and we knew that we weren't going to be returning to a truck for, for several days. So we wanted to make sure that we were warm and comfortable. Right on. Um, what do we got next? Uh, the next thing is, I'm just going to get this out of the way because this is one of my favorites. <laughs> and this is a big weight penalty. I don't know what this weighs. Um, I'd say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six ounces, but that's a pillow. A lot of guys use their um, clothing bag, their extra clothing bag yeah. for it, which is okay if you get it just right and you don't move the rest of the night. But the second that your extra pair of long tons slides to the side or you have a smelly sock in your face or you change your clothes after five days and then all of a sudden your pillow is now filled with really smelly clothes, you're gonna wish you had this. The next piece for your sleep system is, is your most important piece and that's gonna be your sleeping bag. Your sleeping bag is gonna be with you virtually all the time even if we go a really long ways away from the tent a lot of times i would bring this pad with okay. me especially or this sleeping bag with me especially if there was a chance that we weren't going to be returning because at that point if we got into a tight spot i would know that i at least had my clothing plus some the insulation. sleeping bag yeah. and some insulation um it could really save your life if you had it some people bring the survival blankets with them and that's mm -hmm. not a bad thing to put in there but I'll carry the two or three pounds with me, especially if I'm just day hunting from my tent and I know I don't have a lot of weight with me. Right. It's nothing to just put this in the bag and say you have it. Yeah, and if you're glassing or something too, you can cover up with it while you're glassing if it's cold and kind of stay warm. The um, rating on this sleeping bag is a 20 degree bag. Uh, I would say that with the clothing that I had on, which was just a long john, like merino wool, mm -hmm. my pants, and then actually I slept in this while I was out there, which is like a medium weight merino wool, and then my down jacket, I could get into this and it's been down into the teens before and I've been fine. Right on. But if you don't want to wear that much to bed, I would say get a pad that's rated for 10 to 15 degrees. And then I think Brian actually covered in the podcast that he uses a liner for his. So that gives him some versatility on his bag. It lowers his rating down by about 10 degrees. Oh my, okay. And then if he finds himself on a warm night, he can take that out and he doesn't have to worry about yeah. it. Yeah, layering it for your bag. Yep, exactly. Yep, absolutely. Layering it for your bag. And you, you guys, that, that was, we're talking September in Southern Colorado. Yep. So, and you were having big temperature swings. Well, we were, and, and last year when we went, we had extremely cold weather. We mm -hmm. had weather in the upper teens and low 20s. And this year, I would say our coldest temperature was probably right around freezing. We did have some small puddles around camp, get like a real thin layer of ice on them. But that was probably ground temperature and wind. And I would say that freezing temperature was gone within an hour okay. and we were in the 40s. So the nights were a lot more comfortable this year. Last year they did get a little bit chilly and I mm -hmm. wish I had maybe a 15 degree bag. Right. But I'm using Mark that 20 degree bag is going to be plenty. It's going to, yep. Um, so the roof over your head. This is what I was most excited about this year. I took a big leap and I got a new tent. And okay. I had a nice tent last year. I had a big Agnes tent last year and it was it was called a hotel and it really was so it was <laughs> oh, comfortable yeah. yeah it was really nice it had a, a giant vestibule that goes out it was a copper spur it weighed three pounds yep. 14 ounces but it had stakes with it that was a little cumbersome because it's just something else that you have to carry and the setup and takedown of it also wasn't very easy simply because it had stakes and a lot of moving parts but once it was set up it was a hotel it was really nice. So, but this year I wanted Change to go here. I did. I wanted to go a little bit more minimal. So this is a seek outside Silex. And what this is, is a very, very lightweight shelter. And I'll just call it a shelter, maybe even a tarp. And um, it is supported by your trekking poles. So if you think of a TP, a TP has a singular pole that goes up through the middle. Right. Well, this is kind of a double TP. So what it has is two poles that that support it and you sleep in between the poles okay and is it just an a-frame it, it's an yep it's yep. an a-frame that comes off of it and this does not have zippers um, now well, is it compatible with any trekking pole or? it is yep and if you happen to break your trekking pole you can cut a stick it just needs something to support it it, okay. it goes between um don't quote me on this i want to say 130 and 145 centimeters okay so if you want some venting on the bottom you can raise that up to 145 and you'll get some airflow under there. Or if you're in nasty weather and you want to suck it down to the floor, you just put it down as low as it would go. It is a floorless shelter. So I actually like that. There are virtually no bugs when it's 30 degrees outside. So you don't have to worry about creepy crawlies getting on you. Right. And when you come back into your tent, you're not bringing all that dirt with you. That's going to be on the floor of your tent. Yeah. So what I do is I just carry a very lightweight. Um, this was actually from my tent last year. It weighs virtually nothing. It's just a floor 
So I'll put my sleeping pad on this just so a rock doesn't mm -hmm. puncture the sleeping pad. Yep. And that is the extent of the floor. Everything else is completely. And you're talking. I mean, you're talking extremely light. It's a, yeah. It weighs seven. It weighs seventeen ounces. That's um, and it takes four spikes. If you're looking to, to cut weight. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's huge. I mean, I put this in the side pocket of my bag mm -hmm. along with my entire cook system, and for bag space wise, that was huge. And that's probably been the biggest improvement of this is with the old tent, I had the cover for it. And it's a single wall tent. So if anybody knows about tents, you have single wall and you have double wall. Right. You do get a little condensation in it because it's a single wall tent. So that would be my only downfall to the whole thing is you're gonna get a little bit of condensation. But my sleeping bag never got wet and I never had a problem with moisture getting on anything other than But just, things you need to think about, it particularly is, it, if you know specific weather's coming in. Yep, and yep. It was a little bit of a sacrifice to have that, that condensation on the inside. But from a space perspective, that's the way to go. It was worth it.